What is up everybody? How we doing today? We are back with some more reactions. Today we have a video from Dr. Insanity. When a husband discovers his wife's a killer. That would definitely be concerning. Let's check it out. Lori Vallow Daybell is a former beauty contestant. She's lost her mind. She thinks she's a resurrected being and a a god. Anybody you spoke to what? knew Lori back then said that she was like the mother of the year. So what makes her a danger Until to herself and to others? Threaten me, murder me, kill me. We're gathering together mm. as saints, as brothers and sisters, and preparing for the second coming of Christ. She threatened to murder you? Yes. Six months later, oh, no. Vallo was shot and killed. What? They, they found a man with gunshot wound who was later pronounced dead. The first death that kicked off this multi-state mystery. Inside is Lori Vallow's husband, dead on the living room floor. Jeez. What happened today? How did it get to this? He said, you're not Charles. I don't know who you are, what you did with Charles, but I can murder you now with my powers. So how does she pose a with threat to your, your children? With your powers. Lori, where are your kids? No comment? They've been missing for four months. You have nothing to say? Now, Whoa. Lori Daybell appears to be somebody else. She has two missing children, JJ Vallow, Tylee Ryan. I don't know. Okay, like right off the bat, this woman sounds completely insane and deranged. You gotta seriously think about who you marry, you know? Of course, we're very early into this video, but I still have a bunch of questions. Did she spiral into this insane woman that murdered her husband and possibly murdered her kids? Or was she always like this? And he just stayed and put up with all that crap. There is no way that I'm staying around if my wife, for some reason, walks up to me and says, I could end you with my powers. Yep, divorce, instant divorce. I don't know what she's gonna do with them. I don't know if she's gonna flee with them. She's gonna hurt them. All right, is this house or the one with the flashing light? Right there. Car drove on. I don't know where my kids are. Well, get in. Oh boy. Oh my God. Oh boy. It all started on January 31st, 2019, when Charles Vallow was still alive and had just returned from a business trip to still find alive. he was locked out of his own house with no sign of his wife, Lori, or his kids, JJ and Ty Lee. Yeah. His car had also gone missing and a large sum of cash had been withdrawn from his bank account. So in an effort to get some answers, he called 911. So what's going on tonight? I can't get in touch with my, my kids. How old are your kids? Six and a half and 16. She's lost her mind. Mm. I, 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 I don't know how else to say it. She thinks she's a resurrected being and a, a God. And remember the 144,000, she's come to Jesus is coming next year. So what makes her mm. a danger to herself and she's to others? She threatened me, murder me, kill me. She and threatened to murder you? Well, that sounds very Christ-like. How are you gonna talk about you're this holy person then turn around and threaten your husband? She said, you're not Charles. I don't know who you are, what you did with Charles, but I can murder you now. Oh, yeah. Powers. Is this just all recent or what the hell? has it been going on? It's been going on for about four or five years. It's gotten really, really bad. Four lately. or she five years. temple every day and speaks with Moroni and Jesus Christ. Last couple of days, she says, I'm not Charles. Uh, you're not Charles. You're Nick Schneider. According to Lori, Nick Schneider is an evil spirit who has possessed Charles' body. And he believed these threats against his life were very real. In the last few years, she had become obsessed with the teachings of a man named Chad Daybell. A what? man well known for writing dogmatically and teaching his thoughts about the end of days, the second coming of Christ, and other more unique concepts like wow. evil spirits and zombies. Both Chad and Lori were also members of Preparing a People, a cult who were prepared preparing for the second coming of Jesus Christ and the end of the world as we know it. Wow. Lori also believed she was a member of the 144,000, a group of high priests who will administer the everlasting gospel to the world in its last days. She also believed that every human was on a scale between light and dark, and the darker one's spirit was, the more dangerous they were to her and her beliefs. Lori had actually what become so involved in this new religious belief that Charles had become concerned not only for himself but his two children as well understandable said, to me charles okay. stuff is gone okay. you're not charles your stuff is gone i don't know what that and means. how long have you been trying to get in touch with the kids 
happens yesterday. So how does she pose a threat to your children? I don't know what she's going to do with them. Huh? See, um, I'm sorry for pausing, ladies and gentlemen, but if you've been in a marriage for about four or five years and you're seeing this shift in your spouse's demeanor, talking about how she can murder you, kill you, threatening you. Um, I, I don't know how many of us is just going to stay with this person. Now, I get it. It may be a little bit more difficult because you're married and you have kids, but I would definitely be getting some things arranged because I'm not staying for this. Now, as for this cult and the guy that she listens to, that's scary because uh, me being a Christian myself, this guy seems like he's preaching terrible information and it's really easy to misinterpret a lot of things. Now, if you're going to follow Jesus Christ, do you honestly think that he will co-sign you trying to kill or threaten your husband and kids? I don't think so. She's going to flee with them. She's going to hurt them. And today she said, come take the kids. I don't care what happens to them. What? My boy's okay and she's got a pickup order. A pickup order can be obtained after one parent fails to deliver a child to another parent. As Charles has not heard from his kids in days, he felt he had no choice but to take action. The cops then helped Charles get back in the house, but it was too late as mm. Lori and the kids were gone. The very next morning, Charles called 911 again, this time directing them to a hotel in Gilbert, Arizona, where he believed Lori was hiding out with JJ and Ty Lee. This time though, Charles had managed to obtain an emergency mental health petition, a note that would require Lori to check into a mental health institution and undergo assessment. What's wow. going on? Why is she here and you're not here? Or are you staying here with her? <sighs> Long story. She's had kind of a blood from me. I've tried to support her as much as I could, but it's gotten really, really bad lately. She's had a break. She says, I'm Nick Schneider. I've taken what? over Charles' oh, body. Oh, Nick Schneider. Yeah. Charles has been killed. I'm going to kill you. You're going to murder today or tomorrow. Charles what? had already tried to find Lori earlier that morning by turning up at JJ's school, but despite seeing her car in the parking lot, there was no sign of her at all. However, she had left her purse in the car, so Charles took it in hopes that it would stop her from getting away. This worked perfectly as she walked into the Gilbert police station later this same morning to report her missing purse. But her version of events was much different. So this morning when I took my son to school, like he was waiting somewhere and like stole my purse out of the car, my whole purse. So my phone, my wallet, my money, my everything was in there. What, what is it like that motivates him doing this kind of stuff? Is it, did he say one? I caught him cheating and I had evidence and I told him about it and he travels a lot for business. So I told him about it and told him not to come home and that his stuff would be gone and that his car would be gone. And I was like, <laughs> so he's a little mad. <laughs> she claimed that she'd caught Charles having an affair and told him not to come home, locking him out of the house and taking his car. The first of many carefully fabricated lies that would not only ruin Charles's life, but end it. Police informed wow. Charles that he can't steal Lori's property no matter what the motive. A deal was then formed between them saying that if Charles returned her purse, then the police would immediately follow up with the mental health petition. But eventually it went through and Lori underwent her assessment. However, in two hours, Lori was released with the doctors finding no issues at all. This Finding no issues at all? Wow. I felt like they should have found something. You know something? She's probably really good at playing it off. Like she's probably perfectly fine. So that's another thing. Decision sentenced Charles to death and put his kids' lives in jeopardy. Charles filed for divorce and six months later, his body was found at Lori's house with two gunshot wounds across his body. What? Wait, wait, wait. Let me re let me repeat this. Let me. I, I think I missed something here. No issues at all. This decision sentenced Charles to death and put his kids' lives in jeopardy. Oh. Charles filed for divorce, and six months later, his body was found at Lori's house what? with two gunshot wounds across his body. The fate hmm. of his children was now in the hands of their delusional and dangerous mother. Hey, team, we got one subject down, a parent gunshot wounds in the chest. Yeah, but y you know what makes me frustrated, though? He's told these cops numerous times that his wife is threatening to kill him. They couldn't take better measurements to stop that from happening. I mean, that's a pretty big and serious accusation. Somebody is trying to kill me. 
My wife is threatening to kill me. And I, I, I don't know. It just felt like they just kind of brushed it off and then it happened, you know? Um, man, that's sad to hear. He's right here in the living room. Uh, firearm is going to be in the front door, in the front bedroom, laying on the ground next to a case. Okay, you want to stay in here? I'll see yeah, if I get this guy's info. Wow. When Charles's body was found, an investigation determines the shooter to be Alex Cox, a man who just so happened to be the brother of Lori Vallow. Wow. wow. He came at me with a bat. Okay. Was he living here or no. visiting? He came to pick up his son. Okay, is the son inside? No. My sister took him to school. Okay, so it was just you at the house? Yes. And he came, how long, what time did he come to pick up, pick up the son? Uh, I don't know, 20 minutes ago, maybe. Okay, so you know who he is, let him in? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Hey. No, I think they were talking earlier, then she left, and then he got into it with me. Like what? What do you mean? Alex seems very vague in his answers hmm. and says he can't remember exactly what happened. Cap, you can't remember what happened? Bro, you just shot somebody. If you shot and actually unalived somebody, you're going to remember every single detail that probably happened in that scenario because that's such a traumatizing event for certain people but for like the average person i think that they're going to remember every little detail that went on in that scenario come on other than the pair simply got into a fight but those kinds of answers aren't going to satisfy the cops especially when there's a dead man involved i'm saying so you both so you get in an argument what is it over well, i was over my sister he was he was uh, getting physical with her and so my niece came out with her bat and then he took the bat away from her. wait a minute i thought you said your niece left she did this before so before, See, before he already your, lied. Uh, your sister and your niece left, yeah. at some point, uh, your sister and her husband are arguing, yes. verbal argument, and then your niece pulls out a bat? Well, it wasn't verbal. He was getting close, and she came out to defend my sister with her bat. Your niece? Yes. Okay. And then she poked at him, and he took it away. Okay. And then he's he's coming back at me, and he still got the bat in his alley. What are you doing? And where are you at? It? Where are you both at? We're in the living room. Okay. And then... I turned around and he hit me in the back of the head with a bat. I went to my room and got my gun. I so carry it. you went to your room, meaning yeah, the room you're room staying, staying in? Yeah. yeah. Okay, and you brought your uh, brought a gun yes. with you? Yes. Do you always yes. bring a gun? Okay, why didn't you stay just in your bedroom and close the door? Is that something you didn't think yeah. about? or? It didn't even occur to me. This final statement should actually have torn down Alex's entire argument. That's as it technically BS. proves this wasn't self-defense at all. When Alex went to his room to grab his gun, he should have been able to usher his family inside, close the door, and stand his ground from there. Mm -hmm. Instead, he grabbed his gun and without a second thought, ran straight up to Charles and shot him. Because it was but planned. At this point, there were still so many looming questions. The cops decided to bring in all parties back for an interrogation to try and get to the bottom of it all and wow. figure out exactly what happened to Charles. Start where you think it makes the most sense. Okay, so... <laughs> So we moved into this house three weeks ago because he offered to get me a house here where all my family is when we were in Houston. We had decided to separate or whatever. So he's like, well, I'll pay for a house for you and for JJ and whatever, because he's all about JJ. He's never about Tyler, but he's all about JJ. Because mm -hmm. we adopted him together. He's okay. his great nephew. We adopted him as a okay. baby. He came when we first moved in and brought me stuff from Houston, like a U-Haul. And then he hasn't been back. But it's all these threats on my phone all the time, you know, like whatever, all these things. And then he told me, what kind of threats? Just, he's always mad at me, right here. And he doesn't want a divorce. What kind of threats like though? I don't want to deal with him, so that's just how it is. Yeah. So we've been married for 14 years, we've dealt with him for 14 years, and him being horrible to her. Like he gets in huge fights with her, he, yeah, a lot of things, but anyway. Immediately, sure. Lori describes Charles as a man with violent tendencies who had a history of aggression against the women he had married. If she can convince detectives that Charles had a temper, it would make their version of events even more plausible. So he went back to the right. Houston house, okay. and he's like, I'm coming on Wednesday night, and I'm going to come pick up JJ and take him to school Thursday, pick him up Thursday, take him Friday, whatever. And I said, Casey wanted to come to the house, and I said, you can't come stay at this house because you can't get along with Tylee. She's a minor, and she has to live here. Yeah. So, you, because he gets in huge fights up there, okay. and she hates him. <laughs> and so, I'm like, you can't stay at the house, so I would book you a hotel, because he stays in hotels all the time because he travels for business, mm -hmm. and the business pays for it. What does he do? 
He works with teachers in their retirement plans, but he goes to them at their school. Oh, he okay. mostly works in California. Okay. He has like books of business in different okay. areas. And so he just goes wherever. Okay. It kind of just gives him freedom. He doesn't have to stay home every day and take care of social media. Yeah. It's like an excuse. Hmm. Right. Really? <laughs> in the morning and he's like banging on the door. I'm like, oh, well, great. Here we go. You know? And then did you just like, oh, dad. And then he was like, mommy. And like ran to me. And was like holding me. He's like, you're not taking me to school. <laughs> and I was like, it's okay, dad. You can just drive me to school. So yeah. Listen, um, real quick. Can we just say that this person's husband just died and she doesn't have any tears? It's like she doesn't feel any type of remorse or empathy. It almost feels like she doesn't give a fuck. Even if she claims that she didn't have a great marriage with her husband, the father of her kids is now gone, you know? And it just seems a little bit suspect that she doesn't feel really any type of remorse i know that people deal with death in different ways but it just something about her demeanor sounds phony it just looks phony you know what i mean thank you you know just trying to make it whatever um, yeah calm and then um he was just being real smirky and real like jerky you know to me and i was like oh ignoring my god him, whatever. and so he was like i'm like your brother lives there with you no okay. he had stayed with me last night because i was worried he was going to come over and okay. cause trouble with me okay just wanted someone else there like my brother there because i trust my brother they would claim self-defense as the reason charles was killed and as the cops continue to question laurie they start to believe this even more he goes, really? he goes nuts. He's gone nuts on us a lot of times. Tyler and I have had to leave with JJ over the years, probably five times, and just stay in the hotel for two days because you don't know what's going to set him off. Like, she's mad at me for always, like, going back. But we had JJ, and he's special needs, and it's really hard. Like, yeah. it's even hard to take care of a So you thought, and not, I don't want to put words in your mouth, but um, you thought it was possible that he was going to hurt you. Absolutely. He was going to hurt me and okay. Tylee. Okay. Not JJ, you never heard JJ. Okay. And he hurt my brother. Like, yeah. he, he was going like ballistic about it was that. Okay. An angry husband losing his temper during a divorce is not uncommon, and feuding couples often come to blows, making her story more and more convincing. Hmm. But according to Charles's ex-wife, Cheryl, this was not the man she knew. She says they were married and divorced, and not one time, not one second, was he ever physically threatening to me, directly Surprising. contradicting what Lori is saying. When you say he goes nuts, that means, that can mean a lot of different things. Right. So, physically violence he's never really besides like grabbing us and pushing us but not like punching us or something but he, with Tylee he has gotten physical okay he went like he was gonna hit her but then I got in between them mm -hmm. so this morning he comes back in and he goes back in I went give him his phone he was screaming at me to give him his phone he was very worried about whatever was on his text mm -hmm. that she's, he did not want she's me really to see trying so she's I, really trying to leave with this like he cheated thing holding it there and he was screaming at me and so Tylee came out of her room upset mm -hmm. and she had a bat and she told him to leave her mother alone like mm -hmm. right so she was really whatever and he's screaming at her don't you hit me with that bat blah blah blah, blah. and then my brother heard all the commotion because he was in there and, then, and so he came out into the main room and um He's yelling at Tylee, don't you start me with that bad and blah, blah, blah. And so hmm. Tylee, I guess, I don't know if she swung at him or what, but he like grabbed the bat from Tylee and then went to like hit Tylee with the bat. It was no. right there. They were right there. And my brother grabbed him from behind, mm -hmm. like just to stop him from hitting Tylee. They got into the thing and he's hitting him with the bat and they're on the ground, like grappling around or whatever. And then um, and he hit your brother with the bat while they were grappling and stuff. Yes. But there are hmm. lingering questions left by the investigation. One such example being that the autopsy ruled one of the gunshots impacted while Charles was on the ground. Imagine being in a situation where you have no choice but to shoot someone. You'd probably freeze up and you'd do anything you could to avoid anything but incapacitating them right. instead of finishing the job. So it seems strange that Alex decided to shoot Charles a second time when he was already flat on the ground. Right. Furthermore, it also seems
seem strange that it would take almost 45 minutes for anyone to call 911. Forty Although she claims it was down to shock, this is conveniently just enough time to concoct an alternative version of events. That's what I was going to say. solid story to give to the police. My theory is that the brother was in on it too with the sister. I don't think that these events happen as closely as she's recalling. Um, I think she's doing a lot of lying. But at some point in this altercation, uh, the husband ended up on the ground. And maybe he shot him in hopes that, okay, did that take care of it? No, shoot him again. And I'm, sh and I'm thinking that Lori was pushing the brother to do it if, if he wasn't already in on it to you know to begin with but like you know dr insanity said after he sh shot him and you know he's clearly unalived they were trying to figure out what's the next step we got to really think about how we're going to tell the cops what happened we have to formulate the story so that it makes us look like this was in self-defense that's probably what happened okay so you you hear the argument you step out what's the first thing that you see charles choosing after Lori you know okay had, had Tyler already gotten Man, the, Lori is telling you to say this shit. Okay, so Charles is coming towards Lori. He's coming, coming towards way. Lori, and I shoved him back. Okay. And I said, what are you doing? Because he's coming at her aggressively. Okay. He's a big dude, so I wasn't going to... So he's coming at her. Yeah. Um, he's no bigger than you are. Him. Yeah. What happened right after that? So I went into the bedroom where he was standing around my down. I came back. I said, put that bat down. And he's like, what are you going to do? So you're going to threaten me? I was like, no, I'm just going to defend myself so you put that bat down and he goes what are you gonna do it like that and he came at me okay and he'd already hit me in the head so you gave him you, how many times would you say you told him to like put the bat down once once okay and then he started advancing toward you. yes um how many shots did you fire uh i fell with the couple one of Lori's friends Couple. later reported that Lori had said Alex believed her theories about Charles being possessed by evil. And the reason he was at the house at the time of death is simple. He believed Charles was going to try and kill Lori and moved in with her to help keep her safe. What? Dream. I didn't see the shot. It hurt and then I came back around and I saw that he was on the ground okay. and was freaking out. Yeah. And so I was just freaking out and it just went into mom and I'm like, I've got to go to the kitchen. She just go back and get to the kids. I just like I gotta get to the kids, mm -hmm. and so I just went outside and to see if they were in there. Okay, I didn't want them coming back in the house when all that was going on. And and Tyler was like looking at me with like the crazy eyes, like what just happened. And I told her to get in the car and we're gonna take JJ to school. Mm -hmm. and I just left. When you came back what? in and you saw him on the ground, where was your brother? Did you see him where he was at? Yeah, he was right in front of him. Did your brother say anything to you at all? Do you remember? No, we were both just in shock. Okay. Like, it was just a, I mean. This was I, planned. I out with the kids just to check on them first, and I was going to come back in, maybe, um, but I didn't. I was like, I just have to get him to school. Okay. And call please and come back, you know. Did you, you or your brother say anything at some point about calling the police or calling 911? Do you remember? Just yeah, he called me. Okay. And he said, are you taking Gigi to school? Uh -huh. And I said, yeah, we need to call the police. And he okay. said, okay. Okay. So you, he called you when you didn't come back inside, basically? Right. Because okay. I was like in the car for a minute and then I was like, what do I do? It looks on the surface that an what? enraged Charles stormed the house and started shouting at Lori. Alex decided to intervene, fearing for his sister's life, but what started as a disagreement quickly turned into a fight, one that would end with Charles lying cold on the ground. And Ty Lee seems to back up what Lori and Alex said when she tells her version of events. I opened the door and it was my stepdad and he was just screaming at both of them like and so i just kind of stuck the baseball bat out there and then he like he just grabbed it and so i fell to the ground and then my uncle kind of like i saw him take a step back so i'm my uncle i think grabbed him and kind of took him back so he couldn't like do anything and so my mom said to go with jj and so i ran out the door and then i kind of just stood there and then eventually my mom came out mm -hmm. and then I heard a noise, mm -hmm. which I know what it was now, but it sounded like someone like took it and hit it really hard against the floor. Okay. Mm. So I just wanted to make sure that like 
my stepdad didn't do anything to my uncle and mm-hmm. stuff. And so she was like, no, like, I was fine. Like, we're just going to take Jay to school. And I was like, okay. Despite Charles's lack of a violent history and how many times Alex nearly slipped up on scene, Lori's story, coupled with Ty Lee's perspective, was enough for detectives to officially rule this as self-defense. Really? But the death of Charles Vallow was just the tip of the iceberg, and investigators quickly discovered that Lori had become entangled in the world of a seedy cult that would turn this seemingly perfect mom into a stone-cold killer. Right. Lori Lee, with East Idaho News, can you tell me where your kids are? <laughs> Where are your kids? Wow. No comment? They've been missing for four months. You have nothing to say? Listen, just tell people what's happening. There's people around the country praying for your children, praying for you guys. Why don't you give us answers? That's great. Just days after Charles's death, Lori decided it was time for a change and moved the entire family across the country to Rexburg, Idaho. Wow. A strange choice at first, until you realize that this was the hometown of Chad Daybell. And Lori ah. was now living minutes away from a man who had not only convinced her that her husband was evil, but was now beginning to spin the same evil stories for her kids as well. But this is when detectives met Melanie, Lori's best friend and another member of her cult. She was there to spill all the sordid details on their ideology and the beliefs that could soon lead to the death of Lori's kids. Wow! So this this cult that she, that uh, Lori is a part of, basically got to her and has her thinking all of these weird ideologies and i would not be surprised if like the leader of this cult is trying to get at lori you know what i mean so i'm thinking that they convinced lori to off her husband and potentially off her kids which it seems like she probably did but what would drive anybody to believe any of that crap to go and harm your kids and your husband. Where in your psyche makes you feel like this is the right thing to do? Bro, there's nobody that I can get around. Nobody that can make me think about harming my loved ones. And even if I'm not in a great marriage, that's the last thing. That's not even an option, actually. That's never an option. I, that's why I feel like she's got to have some mental issues. And I was so surprised that they found nothing. Chad had just said that it's some childhood friend that Charles had. And that he died. And then he came back as an un... He didn't ever leave. He was an unclean spirit that got trapped on the earth. And he was now attached to him for years. And he'd been studying him, right? And his behaviors and stuff like that. And so then he pushed his spirit out of body and took over. That's what he said. Pushed him out of Charles' spirit. Yeah. So his spirit has now moved on. So she believed that, that he was... That Charles was gone. He was already gone. So she was treating him like he was sent spider. This is oh. all extremely confusing, but simultaneously eye-opening, as it gives us a direct window into what... What Lori believed about her own family. Apparently, she thought Charles was possessed by a dark spirit, and by that point, he was already gone. The <laughs> problem is, she thought the same for her children. Charles had corrupted them, and they'd turn into zombies. What? So you mentioned zombies. Yeah. Um, was that ever a term that you were exposed to by them? Mm-hmm. Okay. Tell me more about the zombie. She said she had a dream once, and an earthquake happened in Utah. People that fell on the earth. If they were able to get rid of all the zombies in the world, then those zombies wouldn't get into those dead bodies. And come oh, out. yeah, she's lost her marbles. She's lost her marbles, man. You're talking about your kids turn into zombies. And you think that your husband is not who he says he is. He has left, his spirit has left his body, and now he's Nick Schneider. Dog, I don't think anybody should be staying with somebody who's thinking these thoughts, man, because it makes them very unpredictable. I get that you're married to that person and you have kids with that person, but is there anything along the timeline that made you go, hmm, that's weird. You're talking about zombies? Hmm, you say that I'm not who I say I am? Hmm, this sounds like this is a bad idea and I should probably distance myself or something. I, to me, I feel like Charles just put up with Lori for like years. And then, and when it got really bad, it was too late. That's what I think, man. Number one time she took a map and she's like, okay, here's the United States. We're going to do a prayer. Let's find out how many zombies are in Arizona. Okay, there's... Huh? Like 
can't, I don't even remember the numbers, it was so out there. And then she'd say a little prayer, whatever words she'd come up with that she thought were powerful. And then he would share, oh, somebody died. Look, you can't get a cup find out. So then that was her way. In my opinion, you know, what I saw at least was just through a prayer that these people would pass away. Lori believes that if the earth was to truly be pure, all the zombies had to be killed. Chad also began to feed Lori more and more fantastical lies about and, how and, the world works. And, 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 it's, and it's him. And it's, this is probably the most important person in this whole story. Chad is the one that's feeding Lori all this BS. Now, again, Lori is still at fault. It doesn't let her off the hook, but this mother effort definitely has convinced not only Lori, but a whole bunch of people in this stupid cult that zombies exist. If you're going to follow Jesus, you have to understand that a lot of the things that Chad is feeding you is a bunch of lies, man. Total lies. And yeah, you have to go out and seek information, but you have to make sure that the information and the person telling you this information is valid. And I'm thinking that Chad probably likes Lori and he's trying to really get with her. Maybe. I don't know. Ascension, translation, and the ability to meet with God himself. And then they had a skill of zero to hundred percent how much you could trust people. I was supposed to be like 97%. They were always building me up. Anyway, she would sometimes share like, oh, I'm this person or that person. That's not trustworthy. It's this person. And that was their book. I'm over, I don't know, maybe you know or don't know, uh, vibrations. So vibrations, yes, I'm aware of that too. So according to how he would check, I, he used that little pendulum thing on. Oh my God. But anyway, 1,000 was supposed to mean, if you got to 1,000, that means you're translated or you're beginning your translation. And then as you get higher in your, your vibration, you could portal at some point, maybe, I'm trying to remember what she would say, 2,500 maybe, or something like that. And so, so, the so, so they're playing God, basically. This almost is the equivalent of like playing with tarot cards, you know, or like crystals. It feels like that anyway. The temple, your vibration would increase. So it's like, it's just like your light would increase, your yeah. vibration, yeah. that kind of idea. Okay. If that makes sense. Lori no, had become does not. convinced she could speak to Jesus. Is that just civil war? No, it, it does not make sense and appeared to be consumed by Chad's work. Not long after, their relationship began to heat up and they even started I, a religious podcast I knew together it. that showed, frankly, just how insane she had become. What, what, was that Lori and Chad, bro? Seen the resurrected Jesus Christ, and he has told me my mission, and he has sent me to help people and lift them in their missions. I'm Over sure. time, Lori had become more outspoken with her beliefs of zombies and began to tell her friends about how many people had been consumed by evil spirits what? and demons. Lori then started telling her friends that her son JJ's behavior had changed and that he had started telling her he loved Satan as well as becoming oh more disruptive God. in the home. Had police listened to Charles Vallow when he feared for JJ I'm and Tyler's lives, then they could have prevented this series of tra- And I said this earlier in the video. Dude, Charles had said, hey, my wife is threatening to kill me. Why didn't the cops act with more urgency? I mean, like, it just felt like they were just dragging their feet, man. Are you out of your mind? And then this happens with him, and then they fucking die. And it's like, bro, why do people get away with this stuff, man? When all of the facts is presented to them. I cannot stand when something like this is fumbled. You have everything. This dude is telling you what's going on, bro. This lady talking about zombies. Zombies? events that followed. Only days after moving to Rexburg, Lori, Alex, JJ, and Ty Lee visited Yellowstone Park. She wanted this to hop was on the Chad. last time anyone saw Ty Lee alive. Wow. Things became even stranger on September 17th, 2019, when JJ was spotted running into his Idaho home on a neighbor's door cam, never to be seen again. Wow. Months later, people started to realize that they hadn't heard from JJ in a long time, and Charles' parents called 911 to alert the police of his disappearance. 
Lawrence. Wow. Lori was caught lying to officers on November 26th after they had made a welfare check on JJ. Evil. According to Lori, her son was with her friend Melanie back in Arizona. But Melanie Evil. not only denied having him, but she also told police Lori had asked her to lie and pretend to officers JJ was staying with her. Then in December, Alex died suddenly. His death was ruled as natural causes, what? but the amount of death and strange occurrences involving Lori was reaching impossible. Wait, levels. wait, wait a minute. Alex went, Alex died too? The one that killed Charles? Oh, what? Oh, nah. Because of coincidence. By this time, police were also extremely concerned for the welfare of JJ and Ty Lee, so Lori was served an order in January 2020, forcing her to and prove look at, that they are safe and it, well. Is this dude, is that Chad? Are you out of your, Chad is, yo. Oh my God, y'all. Chad orchestrated this whole thing to have Lori to himself, man. And it's blatantly obvious, man. And, and, and Lori, of course, believed it. Oh my God, man. However, the deadline came and went, and Lori was arrested three weeks later and Good. placed on a bail of $5 million. But even after the arrest, both Lori and Chad remained silent and refused to give up any information on the kids. Oh but finally, gosh. a further five months later, the police would get their answers when detectives initiated a search of Chad Daybell's property. There, they found the bodies of JJ and Ty Lee. Oh, JJ's body was found man. wrapped in duct tape and placed in a plastic bag, while Ty Lee had been dismembered and burned in a fire pit before being buried. Wow. Police arrested Chad immediately, and Lori's trial began not long after. Yeah, don't start it crying took now. Three years, but eventually she was found guilty of first degree murder, conspiracy to commit first degree murder, and grand theft over the deaths of her children. Lori was far from remorseful in a bizarre statement she made to the court after she was sentenced. Not surprised. My beautiful children, Tylee Ashlyn and Joshua oh, Jackson, stop rest it. safely this day in the arms of Jesus. And I look and, forward- And you got them killed. You got them killed, man. Oh, man. And, and you know what makes me mad is she's using Jesus Christ to try to make it sound like, hey, Jesus, they're with Jesus now. For one, Jesus would never approve of anything that you did up until this point. Let's get that squared away. I don't know what Jesus you were praying to or what Jesus you were worshiping, but that was not Jesus, man. You were being influenced by Chad. And Chad had you believing all this BS zombies and how Charles isn't who he says he is. That ain't, that. that's nothing, that's not Christ-like. And I just hate that she's masking all this as if this is what Jesus would want. And it, I, I just, I, that makes me so mad, man. It really does. To the day when we are all reunited and I too. Oh, you ain't going where they going. In the arms of my Jesus. Thankfully, That's this evil mother, if you can even call her that anymore, won't be getting out anytime soon. Nah. As she was sentenced to five consecutive life sentences. She's nice. not finished in the courtroom yet, though, as her trial for murdering Charles is set to start in April 2024. Wow. As of March 2024... And Chad screw this dude! Screw this dude! Daybell is yet to go to trial, but he could be facing a similar conviction and a lifetime behind bars. Oh, God. Y'all, this was a doozy. I binge watch uh, Dr. Insanity's uh, content, but man... It has never failed to make me feel some type of way, man, because some of the stuff he covers, oh my God, these people, <laughs> they've done some crazy things. Um, but this story was tragic. It was heartbreaking. It was upsetting. Now, I get that cops make mistakes, okay? Nobody's perfect, but when somebody is telling you that their spouse has threatened to kill them multiple times. I think that calls for a sense of urgency. In my opinion, this is not some marital squabble. Nah, this person said, hey, you're not who you say you are and I cannot wait to kill you. You would think that uh, an alarm would go off in these cops' mind. Oh shit, we should probably do something. And look what happened. <sighs> Man, and, and you know what makes me mad is that, like, I feel like Lori 
had um, convinced her daughter to say uh, what she said to, I guess, the, um, the investigator. And then she ended up dying and being dismembered. Then Jay, like, what makes me so mad, y'all, is the fact that Lori had no remorse for killing her husband. And, and by the way, her brother died. And I'm thinking that Chad probably offed him or Lori had something to do with that too. But then she allowed this dude, Chad, the, the leader of this cult, to just pretty much destroy her whole entire family just so that Chad can get with Lori. That's an... I would even argue that Chad is way more evil than Lori. Because he just completely annihilated this family. Had her believe in all this crap like zombies and shit. Are you, are you out of your mind? <sighs> man, it's just sad, man. Now, I get that a few of you may not be religious. I get it. But just so you know, this is not Christianity at all. All the BS that she was talking and all that crap that Chad was talking about, that's not Christianity, man. That's not. I don't know what the they were talking about but that's not it if you guys enjoyed this video please show your support to uh dr insanity he has a lot of great content um and if you enjoy my reaction give me a thumbs up share and subscribe and i'll be back with some more reactions peace